Hi fellow makers, inventors and technology enthusiasts from all over the world. I'm Stefano from Arduino and I'm very happy to introduce the third and last day of Arduino Days 2024. We started two days ago with a day dedicated to innovative transformation for professionals, featuring many customer stories, tech talks and product innovations like the new Opta expansion modules. Yesterday, during day two, the spotlight turned to, to educators who embrace Arduino as a platform to teach STEM and engage students of all ages and skill levels. So check out the, the, the YouTube page and you, you can still see them in case you missed them. But today is day three, Community Day, a huge celebration of makers' diverse skill and, and passions. Oh, sorry, I forgot to turn on, off my phone. Who's that? Hello? Oh, ciao Massimo, where are you? I'm live for Arduino Days. Okay, you wanna say hello? Go ahead, line to you. <laughs> Sorry, Stefano, I didn't want to interrupt. You know, today I am at, uh, in Ivrea. I am only uh, 100 meters away from the building where we invented Arduino. But I am in this museum, which is called the Technologicamente Museum. It's a museum that uh, talks about the history of the Olivetti company in general. So we are in a room with full of typewriters. Uh, there are some famous typewriters by famous designers. So today we're going to spend Arduino Day, going to celebrate the history of technology, the history of Arduino. Today I am a tour guide. I have an honorary badge as a tour guide. So we're doing a tour of the museum. And, uh, you know, I just wanted to say hi to all the makers and all the people who love Arduino. I think it's going to be an amazing last day. And, you know, the team has been doing an amazing job. And uh, so I'm going to go back to the museum and I wish you a great Arduino day. And there's going to be a lot of interesting content. So stay connected until the end. I love you all, and now I'm gonna go back to the museum. Stefan, I'm sorry for interruption. I didn't realize you were live already. So I'll let you go back to Arduino Day. Thank you very much, Massimo. And uh, okay, so now we can start with today's agenda. Uh, as you all know, we love open source. That's why now our VP of products, Alessandro Ranlucci, We'll talk about our perspective on open source. Check it out. Hello, hello Arduino community and welcome to this third day of our, our Arduino days. So every year this gathering, uh, global, worldwide gathering of makers uh, having fun with Arduino and th in this final day we are going to focus on the community which is what makes Arduino uh, a joy for, for so many people. So good morning, good afternoon, good evening to all of you depending on where you are around the planet. Uh, the joy of uh, Arduino days is that people are creating songs, uh, Arduino cakes, uh, uh, projects, workshops, uh, uh, everything to share uh, what it means uh, to explore electronics uh, and to create something uh, with other people. With other people, this is, this is what a community is about. Uh, we, while we speak here from, uh, from Turin, from the headquarters of Arduino, uh, actually around the planet there are so many events uh, being held by, by the local groups, including the Arduino user groups that I want to mention here as a special thank because they are uh, they are groups of, of makers who decided to uh, to focus on Arduino and uh, and promote projects uh, uh, made with Arduino but also all the other places which are in these days focusing on sharing projects from the local makers mm -hmm. I would like to I would like to uh, share a couple of words on what it means to be part of the Arduino community it means uh, 
sharing and contributing to what is now a larger pro project. Arduino was born uh, as, a, as a community project, as an open source project uh, shared online with the sole purpose of sharing knowledge and building all together something valuable for all of us. Uh, democratizing electronics, uh, innovation, uh, knowledge sharing, uh, uh, learn by doing, all the keywords that made a community successful. Now Arduino is a, we know it's a huge reality around the globe and is based on so many people, millions of people, tens of millions of people who work uh, in, with the spirit of learning by doing and sharing online with other people what they've done. Uh, people who go to Project Hub, for instance, if you haven't done yet, I think it's, it's about time to submit your first project to Project Hub. Go there, you will have the, the chance to share your uh, your creations uh, with so many people and inspire other makers uh, i also want to say hi to all the various online communities of arduino the people on the forum on the arduino forum there are so many and uh, share knowledge every day with uh, tips uh, uh, solutions to problems codes snips and, and so on so join the arduino forum i also would like to thank all the other communities and the various social media from instagram to TikTok to reddit uh, all the various parts uh, that uh, make this a larger Arduino community. Um, last year, uh, the open source contribution by all the Arduino community members has been so great, uh, and we had uh, uh, an increase of 20% in the Arduino libraries. Uh, more than 65 hundreds of libraries are now available with a huge growth year after year. This means that our community is vibrant. We can really barely track what is happening. Uh, if you want to learn more, I suggest to go to the Arduino blog and get the open source report. Every year we publish uh, a report of what is happening in the community and how the Arduino team is working to promote. The, the, the open source spirit in the community, uh, but there is much more and that much more is all of you who are today uh, celebrating Arduino with all of us. Uh, I, I hope you will have uh, the, the chance to stay with us uh, during this uh, streaming uh, the whole day because we are going to share so many news right after this moment uh, we will share some very very important uh, uh, news, but uh, after that uh, we will have very cool projects selected from the Arduino community who are gonna present what they've done. So stay with us uh, and uh, of course, uh, as always, have fun! So welcome back in our live stream from the Turin, Turin offices of Arduino. Here with me I have Aurora from the marketing team. Ciao Auri! Hi Stefano, hi everyone, I'm really excited to be here, happy Arduino days. And I just wanted to say there are more than 260 Arduino celebrations around the world. That's incredible, amazing, thank you guys, isn't it? Absolutely, it's mind blowing. So let's get started with the next talk, what's next? So this one's really interesting, but before we go on, I wanted to ask you, how did you sleep tonight? Well, I have to be honest, not very well because I have a six month old baby so but I can say okay I, I went through the night how about you <laughs> well I actually slept like a baby but I have a feeling that the next video will help us sleep even better so if you're worried about night sweats check out Dan's innovative biomaker invention let's check it out <laughs> Hello and welcome to the Arduino Days 2024 showcase of the Q-Strip. I'm very excited to do this because this is something you've probably not seen before. I'm 100% sure, by the way. I'm talking about Arduino in combination with a sweat rate sensor that I invented. I'm an inventor. I'm down for the wherever and I live in the Netherlands. And I'm going to show you my project case of how we can work with the Nano. There's a little Nano device in it, the Arduino Nano. This is the BLE, by the way. We have the IoT33 uh, as well. Yeah, the 33 IoT. We have as well the Arduino the Uno R4 with Matrix. And I've made a display with a library on it. Very cool. And a lot of other Unos and the things you know. Very cool. It works with LoRa One. Uh, if you want to go pro, I even can show you the Portenta version H7. And uh, yeah, we have all kinds of different boards where I tested it on. What it's all about, night sweats. 
I mean, the hardware compatibility, it's compatible with all existing hardware in, on the open source market. But the thing is, the sensor itself, it's very unique. It's a phenotypic digital biomarker under validation. And that's a heavy word for the scientific field. But for us, it's just a sweat rate sensor. And how it's being built, it's done as well with paper, just small, thin layers of papers. I mean, kitchen towel and very special one. This one is carbon, carbon wire. It doesn't weigh a thing. But the funny thing is, and I will show you as well as a tech guy or girl, of course, how it's working, or how it's conducting. Here we go. That's cool, huh? So it's just a wire, a rope. So these, these elements can be very useful to use in combination. And I will show you how it's being done with paper, with carbon, to capture nocturnal perspiration, so night sweats during sleep. And finally, how to build a sweat sensor. This project even went further for me. It was not only to build a sensor, how to build a sensor with Arduino, with the cloud, uh, with all kinds of materials, um, but as well, why do we want to know how people sweat? Over 65% we exist out of water. We all sleep one third of our life. And we don't know anything about the water loss in that time. So that's a blind spot. And now we are able to measure that blind spot. This is really version 1.0. It's an open source version. And that's why I'm educating the world, educating the world of what I'm doing, how it's working and what I found already. But as well, the research that we are doing are quite promising because IoT in health is an, it's a difficult one because we are no doctors. I can tell you, I'm being informed and I've got a network of full of doctors and physicians and go on because I really grinded on the night sweat level. Understanding, is there a sensor? There is nothing like it. It's really cool. The individual project cases that are going along the world uh, are reaching over the 300 already. As well, the students that are following the study that I built, an NLT certified study in the Netherlands, uh, is being followed up. It's all by the sensor that we can create by electronics, by just one transistor and two resistors. Carbon wire, there we have it. Paper, glue, and one of your favorite Arduino boxes. Uh, Arduino, sorry, one of your favorite Arduino PCBs, of course, to build on. This project is open source and all the hardware that I built in is built by is, is around, surrounded by a casing. And that ca the casings are all 3D models that I put available online for everybody. So if you're interested in follow up this, this study, because it's really a study with a phenomenon to show the world, it's really crazy. Um, you will get insights from something that you never seen before, because this instrument did not exist before. Now you are aware of how it can be done and you can be one of them. I mean, what we found already is pretty cool to understand an average of how people sweat. We don't know anything about it and new sensors had to be created. So please be creative and do whatever you want with it. It's yours. It's not about me. It's about what we can do with it. Thank you. My name is Dan. Hey, so welcome back, guys. So now we're going to talk about one of our most appreciated cloud servers, the Arduino Cloud. So all our Arduino software on with onboard connectivity is compatible with our cloud. So do you mean that every board that has onboard connectivity, you can connect it to the Arduino Cloud. But what about third party products? For sure. We support all we support other devices as well, just like the SP32 and so on. So just check it out, go online, set up your device, and with the easy step-by-step -step procedures, you're ready to go. So Stefano, what do you do in your free time with the cloud and what do you like most about it? Oh, I really love it. I, I tinker with it a lot with the device set up in my home, mostly for you know home automation. So I switch on and on lights, maybe based on movement or remote uh, triggers. I, I really love the real-time dashboards that you can set up with drag and drop, literally no code involved, and they look beautiful. 
Also, I love to do remote firmware updates over the air, also very securely, and, and also to see a, a, all the real-time data from my mobile smartphone nice. app. Uh, last but not least, the triggers, the recently introduced triggers were very useful. They allow you to get a push notification or an email in your smartphone. Oh, that's really cool. Yeah. Um, I actually noticed a blinking buddy behind us. <laughs> yeah, do you know what that? Yeah, of course, the Arduino Opla kit, which is our gateway into the digital world of connected objects and people. Mm -hmm. And you can quickly start with one of the eight projects that we provide. One of my personal favorites is the cookie alarm, so no one can steal my cookies. Or irrigate your plants automatically with the Smart Garden project. I definitely need it because I've killed every plant I've had. <laughs> um, so what is our blinking fellow actually doing right now? Oh, well, you see that it blinks uh, sometimes. Yeah. So when it blinks, it means that somebody around the globe just downloaded our Arduino IDE, which is one of the most used open source software in the world, actually. So for our more technical uh, uh, fellow out there, basically, the Opla kit is powered by an MKR Wi-Fi 1010 which is a connected device mm -hmm. that does a poll to a given HTTP endpoint that returns the total number of Arduino ID, ID downloads. So every time the counter goes up, it blinks. That's really cool. So you mean every time it's blinking somewhere around the world, someone's downloading our That's Arduino That's absolutely ID. correct, yeah. Wicked. That's really cool. Mm -hmm. So now for our next talk, our very own David will provide some more insights and details about the Arduino cloud. Hello everyone, my name is David Beamonte and I am the Product Manager for Arduino Cloud. Arduino is very well known because of the hardware, the boards, the devices, the kits and so on and so forth. But today we're going to speak about how to take those creations a step further. You can use Arduino Cloud to create dashboards to monitor and control remotely those creations. So in this talk, what I'm going to speak about are the latest features that have been added to the cloud recently. And I will show uh, also briefly a quick introduction of the cloud. As you all know, hobbyists like love creating things. They are continuously finding a way to uh, control their systems at home, to control you know, the heating system, to control the lighting, um, how to monitor the, the energy they are consuming, and so on. But all those uh, hobbyists and creators have a common headache. They have the common headache of trying to visualize uh, the information remotely using their mobile phone, they're using their, uh, their laptop, and so on and so forth. And also about how to get notifications. So we will now see how uh, Arduino Cloud can go to the rescue. So Arduino Cloud is basically two main things. On the one hand, it is an online development environment for Arduino and ESP boards. It is basically an alternative to the traditional Arduino IDE, but online. You can use the browser to program and develop your uh, devices. It is zero touch, so you don't have to configure and struggle with dependencies, configuration, maintenance of DSPs, and so on and so forth. And you can work from anywhere. But it is not only that, it is also an online sketchbook. Okay, So you can keep your code uh, securely stored online. But additionally, it goes a step beyond. And it is also a hub to monitor and control your devices your creation. So you can use dashboard that, uh, from your mobile phone or your computer in order to monitor and control your devices remotely. So the process working with Arduino Cloud is, uh, can be categorized in three steps. First, you can develop from anywhere. So depending on uh, your needs, you can either choose a no-code solution using the ready-to-use templates, or you can have the low-code approach uh, using the mm, automatically created uh, sketches that Arduino Cloud has, or you can have the full Arduino IDE experience, the full Arduino experience either online or offline using the traditional Arduino IDE. The second step would be programming. You can, of course, use uh, USB, the traditional USB cable programming, but uh, you have more uh, interesting features like, for instance, updating uh, the firmware over the air. For the advanced users, you also have the ability to use the command line interface in order to create uh, tasks for mass scale uh, provisioning and programming or automation. And last but not least, it is a hub to monitor and control everything, as I said. So you can have 
custom dashboards that are very easy to create using a drag and a very intuitive drag and drop system. And uh, you have lots of uh, insightful widgets that help you uh, visualize your data in the way you want. And you can do all that. You can monitor everything using your mobile phone. But Arduino Cloud is much more. It's not only a platform for makers. It is becoming increasingly more popular among teachers and students because it offers a very, very simple way to get started with IoT. But it is also becoming very popular among industries because, I mean, you can develop very easily your applications using the Arduino uh, development environment and also to monitor and control your creations. So at the end of the day, what you get with Arduino Cloud is a set of dashboards that help you visualize your information and control your devices in the way you want. Okay, so now let's jump into the most interesting part of the presentation. These last two months have been really exciting for us as we did some major announcements. The first one was the renewal of the Arduino Cloud user interface. This has been the result of many months of work, but the most exciting part is that it is actually the result of getting a huge amount of feedback from the community and from the existing users of the platform. Now, with the new user interface, we have a more integrated, easier to use, and cleaner interface. And we have added many cool features. You now have a panel that helps you navigate through the various options. You can organize your, your sketches in folders. You can see the history of your device's connection status, for instance. You can also check the history of your triggers and much more. And this, also, and this is all possible mainly thanks to your valuable feedback. But the second major announcement was also uh, the renewal of the cloud editor. It has been completely revamped from ground up to create a more modern interface that can serve as the scaffolding for more upcoming very cool features in the future. And it brings some other things. First, and I think that it is the most important thing, it mimics the experience of the Arduino IDE. The users feel the same Arduino experience, the same Arduino development experience that they love using the Arduino IDE, but online and using the browser. The new editor integrates more seamlessly with the sketches, which is now much better organized. So now you can easily find your IoT and standalone sketches and organize them in folders. Furthermore, instead of two editors, now there is going to be just one. And there are many other cool features. Like for instance, we have a renewed uh, serial monitor where you can see, for instance, the timestamp of the logged lines. The former editor, the traditional uh, web editor, is uh, still available until the end of March when the new editor will uh, be mandatory. Okay, You can use both or the selected one in the meantime. Some months ago, we also introduced uh, another very cool feature. Now it is possible to connect to the cloud devices that are developed outside Arduino environment. For instance, you can use some of the most popular programming languages of IoT, such as Python, MicroPython, JavaScript, or Node-RED, to create your applications. You can develop them using your preferred uh, development environment, and then you can connect the devices uh, to the cloud so that you can monitor and control them using the dashboards that you create using Arduino Cloud. This effectively extends the ability to create devices that can be connected to the cloud to a new breed of uh, devices based on Linux or other platforms. Another very relevant feature that was introduced some months ago was the ability to receive real-time notifications in your mobile phone or your email. Imagine, for instance, that you are monitoring the air quality of your house or a room, and you want to know when the carbon dioxide uh, is reaching a certain level, and you want to get a prompt notification. Or you want to receive an alert when you, want to water, when you need to water your plants. There are plenty of use cases. And the cool thing is that there is no need to add extra code to your sketch or to update it remotely. So you can configure the conditions in the cloud very easily. You just select the variable, you just uh, customize the, the condition, select the message, and decide which is going to be the method or methods that you want to use to receive the notifications. This feature actually uh, keeps you connected to your devices in a more efficient way than uh, checking the status of their devices periodically. Google Home support has been one of the latest and greatest additions to the platform. Alexa integration is an extremely popular feature as you can interact with your devices using your voice. 
but we were missing a big group of users who use Google Assistant compatible devices and Google Home. For them, we have developed the Google Home integration. With this new integration, the, uh, interacting with your devices become as easy as saying, hey, Google, what are my plans? But there is much more. The updates have not been exclusively uh, constrained to the platform. There have been uh, new uh, features added to the IoT Remote app recently. And we have also been working on improving dashboards and widgets because that's one of the main things that the community is uh, constantly asking. So if you have enjoyed hearing about these new updates uh, and you are new to the Arduino Cloud, then you can get the Maker Yearly Plan uh, at 30% off with the code Arduino Day 24. Okay, the offer is valid for the next three months. I encourage you to check it out so that you can uh, experience the full potential of Arduino Cloud. And those are some of the glittering features that uh, have been recently included in the Arduino Cloud, but what's new to come? Some of the most important features that uh, users are constantly demanding are related to dashboard and widget improvement. We will keep working on that and we will have uh, more uh, new announcements soon related to that. Triggers and notifications were also one of the key improvements this last year. In 2024, we will keep working on uh, improving the, the feature too. But we are also working on providing a new getting started experience uh, for users who start playing with their hardware. Okay, this alternative experience will be based on uh, Arduino Cloud dashboards and, and templates. And there will be much more. And this is a wrap. Okay, I hope that you found this presentation interesting and that you enjoyed it and that you learned something new. So thank you very much and keep enjoying the Arduino days. So welcome back from the Turin office. Stefano, we actually have a question from our audience. Which is the best Arduino nano board to start programming? Oh, nano boards, that's a very, very popular family. By the way, stay tuned because later on we have some news in that. But to answer the question, uh, I suggest the Nano 33 IoT, which is a very simple and, uh, and convenient way to, to learn uh, how to code. So check it out. By the way, we have a discount in our store today, so you can also save some money. Uh, moving on, uh, I'm sure many of you know the, the Arduino Mega R3, a very, very popular product uh, that, you know, it's suitable for application that need many IOs. It, it was one of the, it, it's actually one of the boards that enabled the, the 3D printers, right, movement a few years ago, but many other super cool application. A related newer and more powerful product is actually the Arduino Giga R1 Wi-Fi. In the next talk, our partner STM We'll show, we will show you a cool demo using the Giga R1 Wi-Fi plus the Giga Display Shield, a winning combo. Check it out. Hello everyone, my name is Francois and uh, let me show you Nano AGI Studio. Nano AGI Studio is a, is a free tool, um, available a desktop tool, so you can install it on Windows or Linux, available from our uh, st.com website. And, and this tool is uh, purpose is to help any every embedded developers, every makers, every Arduino users to create their, their own machine learning and AI functionality for their Arduino board. So, so we announced today uh, the, the availability of this tool for uh, all the Cortex-M based uh, uh, Arduino boards, means the uh, Arduino Uno R4, for example, is uh, supported by the tool, but also the Arduino uh, Giga uh, R1 I, I used in this uh, short demonstration. So 
let me show you how did we create that uh, that classifier of rock paper scissors uh, very easily so when you create a project on the tool uh, you set uh, the amount of ram you choose your board in in my case it's the arduino giga but you you will find the other uh, arduino boards here and of course ST, stm32 development boards and microcontrollers so you just choose the one you have it's it's okay and then the sensor in my example uh, it's a generic sensor but you you have uh, accelerometer uh, um, microphones you, you can uh, use uh, various sensors and there is one axis because it's a matrix of eight per eight distances this time of flight and and we logged it at one axis so we get uh, 64 values uh, for for each time the sensor will record some kind of image from from it then uh, you go to step two here you collect some signals for uh, the different uh, gesture you you want to be able to recognize so if i i hit uh, add signal from serial my board is set to to data logger meaning the the, the signal are flowing to through the usb port serial port to to my computer and if I put my hands like this for, for scissors, for example, I just say, okay, I want 100 lines. Hit start. And, and you can see that uh, I moved it a little bit. So, so we have some variation. And, and here, um, the studio has recorded the, those uh, 100 lines. I just hit continue, import. And voila, we are good to go. <laughs> we have these uh, new classes. You can rename it, of course. But I, I have already the rock, paper, scissors uh, signals, so I can go to step three. Step three is very interesting because here uh, you just hit run new benchmark. You, you check the, the classes you want to classify. You hit start and here your computer is going to, to, to do the training uh, locally. So how does it work? It will pick some, some algorithm parts, for fundamental parts combining them in, in a smart way to, to try to find what is the, the best solution for, for your project. And, and everything will occur on your computer. So there is no server fee, you know, those kind of things. Everything is free. Um, and, and, and you can see on the screen that the system progressively is going to optimize the solution uh, to find what is the best one in terms of uh, accuracy the capability to distinguish the, the various uh, gesture, rock, paper, scissors, but also consuming uh, the less amount of RAM and flash so, so it can fit in any uh, uh, Arduino board uh, running on Cortex-M Arduino boards. So here you can see that in a matter of uh, seconds, I found uh, a pretty good uh, uh, accurate uh, library. And uh, so I can just hit stop here on the benchmark. And now we are going to test it. So the way we, we are going to, to test it is to go uh, to uh, step five. So if my computer gives me hands back. Yes, thank you. So emulator, emulator, initialize emulator. So here it will emulate on my computer the behavior of this uh, functionality, this library. And um, so it downloads the, 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 the library um, and it, it will uh, make it run on my computer. I go to serial, I just hit start. So here, I, I, let me switch the, the, the view so you, you see better. So here on the right side of the screen, you, you can see uh, the result. So here it's empty. And if I put my hand like this, it's classified as scissors. Uh, if I put like this, it's a paper. And if I do like this, it should be a rock. Yes. So here we go. Uh, in in matter of seconds, we 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 create this uh, uh, running a library uh, very easily. So everyone can create AI and machine learning functionality for their Arduino boards. And now the the last step is uh, logically to deploy. So here you just hit compile library and this get library. And now the, the, the system will prepare the library, the Arduino library for you. So you will get the zip file that you can 
import in your Arduino project, you have documentation, you, you have everything needed. Uh, so, so, so you can import the functionality and, and then use it in your source code. So if I show you here an example, so you just include your nano AGI library with your knowledge. And then in the loop, you can do nano AGI classification with your input buffer. Uh, that is your, your signal, and you will get an output buffer, meaning the classification that has been found by the library. So it's very easy. I really encourage everyone to, to try it. Uh, you will find everything you need on our website and, and also on uh, uh, GitHub. You will get uh, the source code of this uh, demonstration. Thank you for your attention. Bye-bye. <laughs>
including inverse kinematics and balance compensation using an inertial measurement unit. This frees up the Raspberry Pi or other single board computer for the wide range of other features that that has. It also has the advantage that, if the Pi is disconnected, the robot can continue to move and animate with scripted or procedural movement. This is great for demonstrating the robot at events without the battery drain of the more power-hungry computer in the head. The Arduino also features analog to digital converter pins that are used to monitor the battery level so that the robot can shut down if the power level is too low. Over the lifetime of the project, it has built quite a following on Instagram and YouTube, and we now have a growing community of makers who are building their own and working on new features and components. If you'd like to join the community or just learn more about it, take a look at these links or go to makerforge.tech. Thanks for watching. Hey guys, so welcome back. Did you know that our products are made in Italy and recognized for the high quality and reliability? Absolutely. Uh, the cool thing is that we test each one of our products. In the next video, our colleagues Arturo and Danilo will bring you inside our labs where they design dedicated test benches to test Arduino products using Arduino products. Check it out. Cool. Hello guys, welcome to Arduino Days. I'm Danilo. And I'm Arturo from the Arduino testing and production team. Today we are going to talk about the Arduino testing architecture. That is um, an architecture completely made in the house by Arduino with Arduino products. We have a main carrier board for our Portenta X8 SOM module that is going to test all the Arduino products. We test every board we produce with this modular architecture that is called Ramen. Ramen is an acronym that stands for Robust Automatic Modular Equipment Network. And it's based on this carrier, on which we put on top the Portenta X8, the test connector in order to be routed to the board under test. This architecture is modular because we have the same carrier, then we have a specialized board for each product that is connected to this carrier. The carrier can test some function of the board under test. So for example, we test, we test serials, uh, I2C, buses, uh, SPI, this kind of thing. And also we do, of course, electrical tests on our boards to be sure that the product we deliver to the customer is okay from all the point of views. Yeah, as we can see, uh, the board here is completely generalized. And uh, in the case of uh, each family of product, there is another board that we call interposer board that, uh, as we can see behind us, uh, is connected directly, uh, mechanically and electrically to some things called pogo pins. They are like an, a bed of nails that contact electrically uh, each and every test point of the boards that we are fortunate enough uh, for you guys to buy. Of course, uh, we, going, we are going to test uh, everything that uh, can be related to the um, function that the user wants. So we test also the connectors because the, the connector is the main thing of the products we sell because we are going to sell, of course, boards that um, have to be used as prototyping boards, development boards. So the connector is a core function of, uh, of the board. So we uh, ensure that all the connection and all the solderings on the boards are okay because this is a main thing. Of course, uh, we also um, collect data about the current absorption of the board because we, in this way, we can uh, uh, have like a statistics about the, the production because of course we use components that may have tolerances uh, during the assembly process. So we have to be sure that the, the production and the process is under control. I want to be clear about something also. Uh, we have uh, a lot of fun doing this. For example, one of the tests uh, we do, uh, it is about uh, the Science Kit R3, uh, a board uh, we've, uh, we've worked on uh, quite a lot. Uh, we had a lot of fun developing an FFT, uh, reading the output while testing of uh, the output of the audio amplifier. So I know it can seem uh, very boring, but it's actually a very fun process 
to find always new ways uh, to test functionally and also electrically, of course, uh, every board uh, that uh, you guys uh, are gonna then use. So yeah, that's thank you for the support. Pretty much it. Yeah, thank you. So guys, to give more context about uh, what we said earlier, we're gonna uh, quickly disassemble the uh, mobile part of the testing rig, and uh, you're gonna see uh, what happens under the hood. Um, as we can see, the contacts between the boards and all the testing architecture happens thanks to uh, the pogo pins, what I said earlier, the, the bed of nails, and uh, they come in all uh, sorts of uh, shapes and forms, uh, every type of point imaginable, to contact every possible test point uh, that our hardware design team uh, uh, decides to put on the board. And uh, here they are. To make it understandable, we are now going to make a, a simple demo. We are going to test a, a 1R4 Minima and an 1R4 Wi-Fi. We have here a custom board that with a, a present sensor detects the device under test. As you can see, we have the red light when there is no board. And as soon as we place the board, we have the green light. So that as soon as we close the test rig, the test starts. Of course, in production, we use the same board on all the slots we have available. Here in this little demo, we are going to test different boards just for sake of simplicity. As you can see, we had the green light. This means that the test is OK. And of course, there are some fails some, sometimes. When we have the red light, of course, we make an examination of the board to understand uh, the, the failure region because th there are different kinds of failures. It can be an electrical fail, a functional fail, or of course, uh, since we are <coughs> dealing with mechanic, a mechanical fail. This is uh, important because, of course, we have nails that contact pogo pins or connector. So uh, if we have dust or some kind of uh, external element, of course, we can have a mechanical fail. Of course, we have different times between the different boards because um, we execute uh, a test recipe that is uh, uh, sued against the, the product. Uh, we do, uh, as we said, as Danilo said before, of course, uh, electrical tests and functional tests. And when we have the green light, we can ship the product. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed our talk. So happy every new day and bye everyone. Bye everyone. So today, as you all know, is Arduino's birthday. We want you all to, to get a gift as well. That's why we're offering not one, but two discounts for you all. So the first one is a 15% off all our products on the Arduino store, valid until tomorrow, Sunday, 24th of March. Just apply the Arduino Days 24 voucher at the checkout, you can see it here below. What's the other discount, Audi? The other discount is for our Arduino Cloud. You'll get 30% off our Maker Yearly Plan. Just use the voucher Arduino Day 24 on cloud.arduino.cc slash plans. So I'm sure that many of our listeners today are passionate gamers. What's your favorite platform? Do you prefer PC or console? Are you a keyboard mouse player or control person? Let us know in the comments. What about you, Stefano? What do you use? Well, I have to confess I've been playing a lot with PCs in my younger years, but now I'm more of a sofa, <laughs> lazy gamer, so I'm using a super popular console. However, I've, I've always wondered, why can't I just build my own design, my own custom mm. controller? Well, you're actually in the right place. Check out the next video. Hello, I'm Matthew Hieronymus coming to you today from St. Louis, Missouri in the USA. One of the unique things you can do with an Arduino Leonardo or Arduino Micro is make them appear as a keyboard or a mouse to the computer they are plugged into. The project I will be talking about today allows an Arduino Leonardo or an Arduino Micro to appear as a game controller or joystick as well. I originally created this project to allow me to plug in classic game console controllers like this ColecoVision game controller or this ColecoVision game controller 
or even this Atari 2600 joystick into a modern PC without modifying the game controller in any way. This worked so well, I published the instructions out on the internet. After a while, I started to receive requests for various enhancements to the project. This led me to create the generic customizable joystick library I'm going to talk about today. This library has been used by many people to create their own driving simulators, flight simulators, button boxes, and other various custom input devices that appear to a computer as a game controller. This library does not focus on how to read a button, a switch, a keypad, a rotary switch, foot pedal, etc. There are just too many input devices to cover them all in a single library. This project only focuses on making values read by the Arduino appear as a game controller inputs to the PC. One of the simplest ways to try the project out is to get a joystick shield like the one shown here and plug it into an Arduino Leonardo. This particular one has a two-axis joystick, four large buttons, and two small buttons. The joystick library includes an example shield file that demonstrates how to take the two-axis joystick inputs and the six buttons and map them to a game controller's X and Y axes and buttons. Once you upload the example shield file to the Arduino Leonardo, the Leonardo will appear to the PC as a game controller. As you can see in this example, moving the joystick on the joystick shield moves the corresponding X and Y axes on the game controller and pushing the various buttons on the joystick shield push the equivalent buttons on the game controller on the PC. You can download the Arduino joystick library and learn more about the project by following either of the two URLs shown on the screen. I hope this project I've demonstrated today has sparked your imagination and will inspire you to make your own custom input devices for your computer. So as you know, we're all about sharing and supporting our community and sharing their inventions. You just have to follow us on our social media channels like Facebook, Instagram, X, LinkedIn, YouTube, Threads, TikTok, you name it, we're everywhere. And subscribe to our newsletter. You can do that on our website in the footer at arduino.cc. So for the next talk, uh, as you all know, we are surrounded by many small electronic devices. Most of them operate on disposable batteries. So the solution that our next speaker, Paolo Bombelli, will show is mind-blowing. They are creating an algae-powered device that's mm. based on deriving electrical ener energy from photosynthesis. That's really cool, really exciting, actually. And straight after that video, we have a nice community contribution from Rafael Cortez, who will show us how to build our very own canine companion, a project that merges robotics and AI. Enjoy. Hi Arduino folks, welcome back. Today with me there is Paolo Bombelli, research associate at the University of Cambridge, aka the Algal Electrician. Welcome Paolo. Thanks Stefano, thanks for having me. So as of today there are millions of electronic devices that, that are uh, basically disposable batteries that can generate millis or microwatts. Um, what, what would be your consideration in this uh, environment? Actually, if I can correct you, mm -hmm. we are talking about billions, not millions. Mm -hmm. And uh, so estimate says that in the uh, US only, every year people dispose something in the region of three billion uh, small disposable batteries. And this uh, actually means uh, that although nowadays batteries are built better and with less environmental impact compared many years ago, the disposal not always is done properly. And uh, all the mining it is required to build all this battery has a strong environmental impact. Okay, and that leads us to your solution, which is over here, which is a, a device capable of deriving electric electricity from the photosynthesis. Is that correct? 
That's correct, Stefano. So there are, in this case, millions of different uh, photosynthetic organisms from tiny, like unicellular green algae, to huge, like tree. There are mosses, lichens, and so on. And although they are very different, they are all able to do one single and important step, which is called water photolysis. It means splitting water in three products, protons, electrons, and oxygen. The oxygen this is why we have 21% of oxy oxygen in our, in our atmosphere. And if we can combine uh, photosynthetic organism with electrochemistry, we can find a way to recombine proton and electrons outside the cellular body and in the way generating electricity. That's fascinating. So technically speaking, the device itself, how does it work? Well, probably we need uh, uh, be more than 10-15 minutes to explain properly that. However, let me point out at least uh, one, of, one of the fundamental steps, which is uh, the interface between the biology and, uh, and the electrochemical part called anode. The biology is in charge to generate electrons, and the anode is in charge to receiving electrons. The interface between those two elements is one of the most important and also limiting factor for, uh, for, a, for a good operation of those devices. And uh, understanding how electrons can be moved from, uh, from the biological component to the anode pretty much is, uh, is one of the main, uh, constituted one of the main part of my life over the last 10 years. So, from your perspective, what, what is the, the potential for this technology today and tomorrow, of course? So, as we stand, uh, we can generate a microwatt, probably up to milliwatt of power. This means that uh, small electronic devices, for example, sensor, can be powered by using this technology. And uh, in my view, this is already could already have a huge impact, given that we're already talking about billions of, of possible applications. Uh, for the future, perhaps uh, lighting, mobile phone, uh, computer, uh, laptop, if we are able to scale down uh, the power consumption. And I was thinking, so in a, in a, classic, in a classical laptop, uh, a large percentage of the power is consumed by the screen. However, whether in the future we can have a tiny screen embedded in our glasses uh, with less power consumption, maybe, maybe it's feasible for this technology. So, however, I don't really think we will power your electric car. Sorry about that. Mm, we'll see. So, how, how does how do biophotovoltaic system compare with solar panel and traditional batteries? Of, of course, there are pros and cons. If, you are, if your aim is to power a technology with high energy demand, probably traditional battery is what you're looking for. Or if you have available a lot of light, for example, you are outdoor in a very sunny place, go for a traditional solar panel. However, if we are indoor and you just need a micro to milliwatt of power, this technology is great. Um, first of all, because it uh, generates 24 uh, 7. So you also have uh, electrical output from the non photosynthetic metabolism. It doesn't need to be recharged, recharged just with, with a bit of light, the diffuse light, indoor diffuse light. Also, it's built using non toxic material, it's completely recyclable, and nothing in this device is made by. Um, rare material. So uh, they need oxygen, right? Or light, but not that much. Is that correct? Well, they need light, huh? mm. a small amount. The indoor, the so-called diffuse indoor light is more than enough. Mm. They don't need oxygen, they, produ they produce oxygen. Okay. So how about CO2? Well, uh, Let's put it in this way. Photosynthetic organisms consume CO2 while they are 
doing photosynthesis, mm -hmm. and then they produce it to you during the night. Right. Overall, uh, the balance is probably neutral. Okay. Uh, so you you were also saying the materials are cheap, available. Can I build one of these? Yes, you can. Actually, we are working to build together a educational manual for providing all the information that you need to build, up, to build up a system. And ideally, we also want to suggest you where to get the material mm -hmm. to do so. However, we know that can be challenging. So to facilitate that, uh, we are also trying to put together an educational toolkit, including all the material. And we need partners. And I've been thinking that perhaps uh, Arduino can be a good partner. That's a very good thought. <laughs> now we will love to be part of this project and support you. Great. With this, absolutely. And um, also, you mentioned education. And you also told me there's already a book mentioning about your technology. Is that correct? That's correct. So we have been uh, presented in uh, an educational book uh, um, recently, recently released on the market. Okay, cool. Thank you very much, Paolo. It was a pleasure having you at uh, the Arduino Days 2024 and see you soon. Thank you very much for having us. Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. I am Rafa Cortez and today we are celebrating Arduino Day with an exciting project. Today I'm going to show you a project that combines the magic of robotics and creativity with Arduino. Have you ever dreamed of having your own Boston Dynamics style robot dog? Well, here is mine. This incredible robot is powered by none other than 12 servo motors, all managed by an Arduino Nano board. But that's not all. It also connects to a Raspberry Pi and uses OpenCV to follow me. It's like having a cybernetic furry friend. Now, let me hold you throughout the creation process. First, I designed all the pieces using 3D modeling software. You can see the design on the screen as I speak. Once I was satisfied with the design, I 3D printed the pieces. Here are some of the printed part. But how will does this robot follow? Let's put it to the test. As you can see, it followed me around since Leslie. It's amazing. Future upgrades and developments. But this is just the beginning. I plan to continue developing this project and make my robot dog do even more incredible things. So I will teach him it shake hands and who knows, maybe even potty training. Creativity is the limit when working with Arduino. Importance of Arduino. Before we wrap up, I want to emphasize the importance of Arduino in this project. Arduino not only makes programming the servo, the servo motors easy, but also provides a versatile and accessible platform for creating all kinds of projects on events like Arduino Day. We celebrate the community and innovation that this platform fosters. And that's it for today. I hope enjoyed seeing my robot project. See you in the next video and happy Arduino Day everyone. Okay, welcome back and again, happy Arduino days. Now, our colleague Carl will show you how quick and easy it is to send your Raspberry Pi data via the Arduino cloud. Check it out. Hello everyone. I'm Carl from Arduino and I'm wishing you a happy Arduino day. Today I'm going to show you how to connect a Raspberry Pi to the Arduino cloud. The Arduino cloud can interface with almost any Linux-based devices, and you can write your application code in either JavaScript or in Python. 
When setting up an Arduino cloud project, or a thing as we call it, you will always need to attach a device. To connect the Raspberry Pi, you need to choose a manual device. A manual device means that it is not configured directly in the Arduino cloud interface, but you need to configure it on the device itself. So to set this up, you will need to have a Raspberry Pi with an operating system. In this case, we used a Debian Bullseye. Please note that in this tutorial, we will not cover how to set up the Raspberry Pi itself. But if you need any help with that, you can head over to the Raspberry Pi documentation. So the first thing we need to do is head on over to the Arduino cloud and create a new thing. Here we got some variables that will link the Raspberry Pi, named button, led, and test value. I already configured my device. A Raspberry Pi falls into the manual device category, where we use the device ID and the secret key in our script to connect to the cloud. So once you've set up the Arduino cloud, you can move over to the Raspberry Pi part. With the Debian OS installed on your Raspberry Pi, the first thing we need to do is install a couple of dependencies required to connect to the cloud. The main package is called Arduino IoT Cloud, and you install it by opening a terminal window and running pip install Arduino IoT Cloud. You will also need to install the SWIG package by running pip install SWIG. To use the Pi's GPIOs, we use the GPIOD library, which is installed by running this command. Once the installation is complete, we can start creating our script. For demonstration purposes, we have connected an LED and a button to the Raspberry Pi, which we will control and read from the Arduino cloud. We also have a random value generator that sends a new value every 10 seconds to the cloud. Most importantly, at the top of our script, we need to fill in our credentials. This is the secret key and the device ID that is generated when creating a manual device in the Arduino cloud. Then, to launch the application, run the Python script. So now when I'm pressing this button, I will see the dashboard change in the Arduino cloud. And when I click the virtual switch in the cloud dashboard, the LED will turn on. Now, this is a very simple project involving very few components, but it shows you how to connect the Arduino cloud with the Raspberry Pi. And that's pretty much it for today. Uh, from here, you can obviously scale up your project to do a little bit more sophisticated automations. And as a bonus, you can also consider using the variable synchronization feature, which allows you to synchronize variables on your Raspberry Pi with an Arduino board without using any sort of networking code. Hope you enjoyed this video and have a fantastic Arduino day. I hope you enjoyed Carl's overview. Uh, Carl is one of our colleagues from Sweden. Uh, one of our offices is actually based in Malmo. In addition, Arduino has offices in Switzerland, uh, Italy, and USA, as well as many colleagues that are working remotely. We are, we are a very smart, inclusive, and fun team. So if you're interested in joining us, check out the open positions at careers.arduino.cc. Now, how about the next video, Audrey? The next one is actually a personal favorite. So I would, like you, I would like to introduce Danielle Boyer. She's an indigenous youth robotics inventor who's revolutionizing education. And through her charity called the STEM Connection, she has been able to distribute personal robots for free, impacting over 800,000 youths. So stay tuned to check it out. Hello, welcome to Arduino Day 2024. And I am Laura Balboa. I am here sitting in Turin in Italy, and I am extremely happy to be hosting this interview. Uh, I work as a product delivery manager uh, internationally for Arduino, and I usually live in Malmö, Sweden. So I want to introduce you to someone very special, and I am really happy to have her here. So Danielle, Danielle, how are you? Hey, Abuju, uh, hello. I'm so happy to be here with you today. Great. Tell us a bit about yourself, because I think it's I always like to give space to the to the to the interviewee to, you know, present themselves in their own words. And also, you know, in your particular case, uh, you just greeted us in your uh, native language as well. So bonjour, this is right. Yeah, bonjour is like a formal hello. Uh, bonjour, hello. Uh, my name is Danielle Boyer. I'm Ojibwe, um, which is an indigenous community in North America. Um, I'm a part of the Sioux tribe, and um, I'm a youth robotics designer. I've been designing robots for over five years now. I'm 23 years old now, so that's 
like all of my adult life and more. And I work to make technical education accessible for Indigenous communities through robots that I design, manufacture, and distribute for free. I do a lot in language revitalization and uh, kind of closing the digital accessibility gap, um, education in general. And uh, I give all the way, all the robots away for free through my nonprofit, the Steam Connection, and it's a youth run organization out of the United States. I think you are touching uh, like a very important point when it comes to, you know, self-determination, self, uh, you know, um, development for things that you care about and also building this community. This is something as well that I've been uh, finding in Arduino as, as one of the core values as well. And it's, it's important that you're like stating the fact that not everybody has access to technology and these gaps can be very hard for people. So um, I'm really happy to talk about this type of uh, work that you are doing. On some base level, everyone needs some technology skills. And when our community and our youth are left behind, that leaves us at a huge disadvantage. We're not able to stand up when things aren't going right or when tech is used against us. And we can't create positive solutions if we're not taught how to. Yes. And so that's kind of the gist of why I do what I do and why I care about it. And that kind of led me to create two little robots um, that I'm very proud of. One is called Every Kid Gets a Robot, and it's a robot that costs less than $20 to manufacture. It's made out of recycled materials and it goes to kids for free. I've sent out over 11,000 of these it's robots. Amazing. Which is, yeah. Yeah. Which is crazy. And it's like a little uh, remote control car for kids. And basically they learn how to assemble it. They learn how to program it using Arduino IDE. They learn how to um, basically know the inner workings of robotics. The other robot that you have as well that I am really interested in because it's uh, built you know, to, to help um, preserve the languages, which is like also a core or like a big part of uh, the communities, the native communities. So tell me about that, Robert. Yeah, so um, indigenous languages are facing a lot of problems. One of those main problems is that we're under threat of having our language, uh, languages go extinct. And so that kind of led me and my mentors to create um, a robot called the SCOBOT. And SCO is let's go in reservation slang. And basically what the robot does is it sits on your shoulder like right here. Um, it senses motion and then it starts speaking indigenous languages. We have an intelligent version where it can actually communicate back and forth with um, the person you know, speaking to it. Um, we also have a non-intelligent version to uh, cut costs and also for issues with like Wi-Fi and things like that. Because as I said before, a lot of communities don't have internet access. So all of our robots, they can work without Wi-Fi, which is really exciting. And so um, that is like a more of a pre-programmed loop type of vibe where you can uh, sense motion and then the robot just starts talking with the toy. So we have both versions and um, it's been really exciting because we have a few indigenous languages now on the robot and we've been able to see kids really respond well. It's like a little like droid with kitty ears and it's very cute. And we work hand in hand with each community to make the robots unique and custom to the community. So the robots will wear regalia, they'll have beaded earrings, they'll uh, wear different elements unique to the communities that we're working with. So I think we touch upon really important topics like access, accessibility, also, you know, community, community based uh, values, and also sharing technology, knowledge, and how you can also define how you want this technology to be used because, you know, to own the matter of ownership. So what's coming for you? What are you doing? Uh, can you tell us what is next? Or uh, if you want to share the social media as well, so people can check out what you are doing in the internet? Right now, what I'm working on is a really, really cool program uh, called Super Sisters. And it's an app that I'm building out with one of my students. And basically, um, it's an augmented reality platform so that no matter where you are, you can build robots on your phone. And you can also learn indigenous languages, you can learn about native plants, stuff like that. And um, 
we just got funding from MIT Solve and Tiger Global Impact Investments to build that out. So that's like so exciting and so validating. And so we've been able to get all my, my robots on there. And it's crazy like seeing kids build the robots in the air and say, okay, this is how I identify this part. This is a chassis and, you know, uh, this is an Arduino board. Like what is what, you know? On the day-to-day, -day, I'm building robots literally every single day. And if I'm not building robots, I'm talking about the robots. <laughs> Um, and so that's what I'm doing right now is traveling to talk about robots. So I'm in Europe right now doing that. Um, but yeah, and if people want to learn more about the robots, see how I build them, see demos of the robots and things like that. Um, I post a lot on TikTok under my name, Danielle Boyer, and on Instagram, where you can literally look through and see my 3D printing process, the woes, the positives, all those things. And um, I suggest checking it out. So thanks a lot for your participation. And I hope to see you somewhere. Um, I don't know exactly where, but I hope to meet you in person one day. They are passing. Thank you. <laughs> yes, for sure. Yeah, yeah. Miigwech, thank you. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Now we have some really exciting news for the community. It's been highly anticipated as a very popular Arduino product family is growing. Absolutely, more precisely, we're talking about the Arduino Nano family, a set of products that's characterized by tiny footprint but mighty features. Arduino Nano is a very versatile set of boards suitable for home automation, smart gardening, gaming, wearables, art, music, design, Everything. <laughs> or industrial applications. With them, you can start thinking on a different scale. So in the following sessions, we will tell you what the new product is, as well as we will talk a little bit about our partnership with Silicon Labs, and we'll show you a hands-on demo. So are you ready to see the next addition? Let's, Let's go. go. Hello, I'm Fabio, and here with me I have Marcello. Hi, Fabio. Hello. So, Marcello, what are we talking about today? We are talking about something that matters. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Jokes aside, we are here to you know, introduce a new uh, device uh, into the Arduino family, uh, the Arduino Nano Matters. Uh, Matter is uh, uh, a new open source connectivity standard uh, that aims at interoperability between uh, uh, devices in the smart home and IoT space. So it seems to be quite interesting as a as a product because matter we heard about matter for a while now, and um, and of course jokes aside, I think it's important to uh, tell our community why matter is important and ma why Arduino uh, has been involved in matter uh, in the past few months uh, working on products. So Marcello, for you. Uh, what do you think is the most critical thing of matter? Well, the uh, Arduino matter, uh, the Arduino Nano matter, um, is uh, you know a very important device because it really break takes down uh, the complexity of uh, uh, you know for makers uh, and uh, and developers uh, to really uh, uh, develop uh, on uh, the matter protocol and connect the devices in a way that is inter interoperable with all the other uh, components of uh, your smart home or your IoT ecosystem. And this is very important, I believe, because this is aligned completely to the philosophy of Arduino of. Uh, taking complex technology and make them accessible to a large audience. And uh, when, when I saw the first, let's say, prototypes uh, of these products, my mind went immediately to the software component because in order to solve the matter complexity, uh, there is a lot of software involved. So matter is a protocol that basically is based on other protocols from IPv6 to complex security and shaking and all these type of features. So my worry was, are we going to do something that really uh, that is really easy to use for, for users? And uh, we pushed as a team, our R&Ds and also our friends at Silicon Labs that played a very important role uh, in this the development of this product and the entire ecosystem surrounding this product to, to think about the users. 
So Marcello, in terms of uh, capabilities of this product, what people can expect when this product is going to be out? Absolutely. So the Nanomata has, uh, you know, the Arduino Matter form factor and, uh, you know, is available with, uh, you know, a bunch of very exciting and interesting features uh, 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 right on board. Uh, of course, uh, the, the heart of the Arduino Nanomata is, uh, you know, the chipset from Silicon Labs, uh, MGM 2400S, uh, which is, uh, uh, you know, at, heart, at the heart of, uh, of the board. The, the board, of course, has also Bluetooth low energy and uh, supports uh, uh, the open thread connectivity standard uh, uh, that is uh, um, relevant for matter. Um, and then, as uh, you know, all the other you know features that you would expect uh, from uh, you know the Arduino Nano family. Uh, it has uh, uh, castellated pins and headers uh, on the sides, uh, giving access to I squared C, um, SPI, URT, and uh, you know digital IOs. Uh, it has an integrated antenna. Uh, it has uh, user configurable push buttons uh, and has, of course, a USB C connector. Fantastic. So it seems like something that uh, is part of a big family of products for Arduino. So the, the Nano family is very important for us, and uh, there is a huge ecosystem because of the the nature of the of of the, uh, the form factor that is very small can be embedded into into products, can be embedded into projects. And what is also interesting about these technologies that um, there is a, a very, very strong focus on, uh, on low power so that people can really create very, very low power devices uh, that can, uh, can, can last for months. Of course, it will depend on what kind of software you write with it. And by the way, on the software side, I had the pleasure to test it because I, I was, was not believing that it was possible to make something simple. And it boils down that with a really few lines of code using the Matter library, uh, code developed by our team and uh, Silicon Labs, you can basically create a, a device that can be a light bulb, that can be one of the different uh, different profiles that you can create on uh, on Matter. So it seems to be quite uh, quite interesting because you know I don't know your house, but my house is packed with. Uh, Three million different brands of technology, etc. So the idea that now we can uh, we can have also a device from Arduino that can solve a little bit of this complexity and heterogeneity of uh, of environment seems to be quite uh, quite interesting. Absolutely, and on the software side, uh, uh, the matter not only pr it brings the same uh, uh, tools uh, and advantages of you know being in the Arduino ecosystem, starting from uh, you know the Arduino IDE, the Arduino Cloud Editor, and of course the Arduino IoT Cloud, uh, but being uh, uh, you know some sort of a bridge between the Arduino world and uh, you know matter ecosystem, it really brings the Arduino ecosystem into you know the uh, other uh, you know larger ecosystems that we see in the smart home, like for example. Google Home, Alexa, and uh, and Apple with iPhone and uh, and uh, an Apple Home. Um, in uh, in this way, thanks to uh, you know the tool chain uh, that is the usual tool chain that you have with uh, you know any other Arduino, you will be able to quickly and easily configure your uh, you know new smart device uh, and have it seamlessly integrate with the rest of uh, your ecosystem. And if you have other devices uh, that are not uh, supporting the Matter protocol but are still part of your home automation smart home environment, uh, you can integrate them uh, by connecting them through the Arduino IoT Cloud. Now, this is very, very interesting, and I think that uh, we expect uh, a lot of contributions from, from the community. Uh, we will start with a beta program uh, in, the, in the future for, for, for this product, so there will be a specific uh, information that will, will be uh, shared during these three days about the availability of the initial batch of the product. And then we want to learn a lot from you, so stay tuned with us. Uh, our team will make sure that you will get all the information to, to contribute and share your, uh, your stuff. And uh, it will be very important also to listen to the feedback of the ecosystem of, uh, of vendors in the area of matter. If they're interested to collaborate with Arduino, we are here to listen. So thank you very much for, uh, for staying with us. Thank you, Marcello, for your time today. Thank you for and having me. And we hope to be providing a fantastic technology into the hands of our community.
Ganit, I'm glad you're here. It's good to see you. See you, Rob. Uh, we're thrilled to be working with you, of course. Yeah, absolutely, Rob. Uh, nice to meet you. Thank you for having us. It's a beautiful location, you know, in Austin, overlooking the lake. Thank you for having this. I think, first of all, the Silicon Labs and the Arduino partnership is very dear to our heart. You know, the journey we started off with Arduino was really how we democratize and make electronics really easy. Yeah. And, you know, with 36 million plus developers today developing on the Arduino ecosystem, we also found that there's one technology which has so much promise in being ubiquitous, being secure, reliable connectivity in smart home and other areas matter, which was still hard to do. Uh, and, you know, I think for us, the number one philosophy is how do we make it easy to use and drive feature functionality of any technology and uh, democratizing what we did for microcontrollers with boards is exactly what we think we can do for Matter with y'all together in uh, Matter. I, I think the Arduino solution in general for microcontrollers is widely regarded as one of the easiest steps to developing a project or developing a, uh, an idea and seeing it from conception to reality. Uh, so to add that to our uh, portfolio of development options, it's a, a significant shift in making things easier, more accessible, democratizing matter. One of the topics that I think is important for us to talk about is the significance of matter uh, in the CSA org mm -hmm. to our industry. And it, it really is a shift. Uh, we see it as a, an advent that stops the protocol wars. And it's the first time that you're seeing some of these big ecosystem juggernauts uh, work together and move past the protocol. Mm -hmm. and start developing for applications and features that they see is going to drive their industry. Uh, and I, I think the same concept is viewed as Arduino's uh, best Fourier into the market uh, with Arduino Matter Nano. I think it will change the industry and the world over the next decade. Yep. I think what we were also very excited about, uh, one, it's very significant, uh, the whole Matter movement. It's also Hopefully, together we can make it easy. Uh, but it goes beyond smart home, right? Oh, yeah. I think, uh, you know, what I, I think I'd love to get your perspective on is definitely making it really easy and ubiquitous to connect smart home devices, you know, be it thermostats, be it air conditioning, be it lighting, be it, you know, Absolutely. shutters. And then even goes beyond that into, you know, we uh, as Arduino have a big, big, big focus on smart agriculture and irrigation. You know, you can actually start doing irrigation and smart. Uh, you know, go beyond the home. Uh, yeah. Do you think the same way? Oh, I, I think that's why we're so excited about it. Matter is uh, frequently referred to as a smart home technology, but the way I see it uh, is it's really a gateway technology. And all gateways could use the technology to make it easier to tie in nodes into a gateway. Uh, and so you could even argue with Matter and the IP layer that it offers, it's even more valuable to a building where you have multiple floors, each with hundreds of nodes, uh, to make it so that's accessible in an IP table where you can provision the network th yeah. from an iPad. So we see the industry applications far wider than just smart home. We see it in industrial and commercial settings as well. I think from our perspective also, as you see, I'm wearing an Arduino Pro t-shirt. Yeah. <laughs> so I think uh, for the last 18 years, we've seen millions of developer prototype. Uh, you know, developers prototype, as well as use uh, Arduino for the first release of their product, you know, which we love that we're doing this together with, you know, with you guys, because that gives us the credibility of actually doing this into uh, commercial applications beyond the prototyping. I think most college students have, will boast that they did their first project with Arduino. So we were really excited about the partnership uh, just on that front alone. But as you started talking about taking it from concept to proof of concept, prototype, and then carrying that into a, a production grade software story, that uh, got us even more excited. That's great because you know the libraries that we will bring out will make it really easy to use. The robustness that we will bring out with your you know, technology is actually makes that ease of use go from prototyping into POC into production. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, from our perspective, uh, you know, we, uh, we'd love to do more. You know, yeah. because we have, of course, our education side and maker side, which is very, very important to kind of spread the technology. But, you know, over uh, 30,000 customers and industrial enterprises have started to use Arduino in yeah. various forms into the pro side. 
Yeah, I think uh, what we really liked about the Silicon Labs partnership was embracing the open ecosystems of multiple approaches, uh, not just being locked in, at the same time being a very quick and nimble partner to understand technology and launch the proof of concept together, which yeah. you know we did really fast for the Nanomatter uh, board, as well as then having the robustness and scale of someone like Silicon Labs on the back end that you can actually go from a proof of concept to a full scale deployment. So the combination of you know quick and nimble partnership with a very robust technology, um, as well as uh, embracing the open architectures, mm -hmm. is, was a perfect partnership. Yeah, that's that's uh, I, I'll call it ironic, but that's sort of the reciprocal part of what we were excited about. As I've talked to you about, it is an earmark of us moving uh, to a more open uh, ecosystem, moving to embracing open solutions for hardware open solutions for software, bringing the Arduino IDE, which is widely regarded as one of the most simple to use IDEs. Absolutely, and I think the approach that this is something we're doing completely open, the entire code is on GitHub. Yep. You know, it's an Arduino library which can work on uh, either getting your own custom devices if you want to get into the you know uh, matter side, or you can build using a little nano tiny form factor devices from scratch. Uh, and you know, even from a, a router perspective, you can use a thread broad router, you can use any other router, you're not locked into any vendor. Uh, and also from the chipset perspective, we are completely open for future extensions into multiple technologies. So I think look out for the new um, Arduino Nano Matter board, which is based on Silicon Labs technology. Use that for prototyping, use that for POC, it's available, it makes your smart home application easy. It allows you to not just do proof of concept, but also scale. And the third thing is look out for more joint solutions that the two companies will launch, both in the makers, education, and in the pro space. I think the practical applications we've seen in our ecosystem of developers, definitely smart home, goes without saying. So yeah. once we go beyond the consumer application in a smart home and you get into either industrial, into HVAC, you know, yeah. air conditioning, or you know, access control and other regulated industries, we see the continuum of especially the software libraries on having boards like Nano Matter yeah. that we launch all the way to having the Portenta and the Nikla series of our boards, which are more industrial grade, where compliance is important, temperature ranges are important, robustness of you know the libraries is important. It's kind of a continuum. It's a continuum, and that's what I love to see because for decades, uh, what happens in the smart home, the coolest tech we see there, shows up in industrial and commercial space. You're absolutely right, and I think you can start off with anything, you know, the 9,000 libraries with the 30 million developers that you can use, so I think that's the approach. Hi, it's Tomash from Silicon Labs, and today I'm here to show you how you can create your own smartphone devices using the new Arduino Nano Matter. Today, we will be creating a matter-powered Corolla light bulb and connecting it to my Google Nest Hub, which will act as a thread border router. Besides the MGM240 module, we also have a user programmable button on board and an RGB LED, which we will be using as our color light today. In order to get started, you will need the Arduino IDE, which as you can see here, I already have open. You will also need our GitHub project page, in order to install the Silicon Labs Arduino core. You can find it here, github.com slash siliconlabs slash Arduino. We have detailed installation instructions here, but the main thing you will need is this URL. Copy it and go back to the Arduino IDE. Go into settings. Go into the additional boards manager URLs. Press this button. And if you have additional URLs, you can add this one beneath them. Press OK and press OK again. Now let's go into the Boards Manager and search for Silicon Labs. And the Silicon Labs Arduino core will show up and you can just press Install and this will install all the necessary tools you need for developing on Silicon Labs hardware. Now that we have the core installed, we can go ahead and close the Boards Manager. Now it's time to select our board. Go to the Tools menu, go to Board, go to Silicon Labs and select the Arduino Nano Matter. 
As you can see here, you can select whether you want to develop with BLE or Matter. Today we will be using Matter and we will be also using the pre-compiled version, which is much faster to compile. For good measure, go to the Tools menu and select Open OCD as your programmer. Go to the Tools menu again and burn the bootloader. You only need to do this once after you receive your board. Now it's trying to create our lightbulb example. Go to File, Examples, and as you can see the Matter library here has loads and loads of examples for different devices, but we have a specific example for the Nano Matter and the Color Lightbulb. Go ahead and click it. This will open a new window. Let's go to this example quickly and I will show you how it works. As you can see, at the beginning here we include the Matter library and also the Matter Lightbulb header file. We have our three LEDs. Here we create an instance for the color lightbulb. We have these helper functions and also a global variable to store the button state. In the setup function, after setting up the serial, we also begin the Matter library and we also begin our color lightbulb instance. We boost the saturation a bit to get some more saturated colors. We set up the onboard button and turn all the LEDs off. This part is responsible for checking whether the device is commissioned to a hub or connected to a hub. If it's not, it will print all the necessary information to the serial console, so you will be able to commission it to your matter hub. It will wait until the commissioning is completed and it will also wait until the device has been connected to the network. The commissioning is persisted, so you only need to do this once and if you reset your device, it will remember all the commissioning details. In the loop, here we handle the button presses, so if the button is pressed, we invert the state of the light bulb. So if the light bulb is on and you press the button, the light bulb will get, will get turned off, and vice versa. Here we check the last, store the last state of the bulb and check the current state of the bulb. And if these are different, and the current state is on and the last state was off, it means the bulb has been turned on. So we call this function and also store the last state. This is the same thing we do for the bulb off, only here we call the LED off function. And this is the same what we do for the colors. If any of the color components changes, like hue, saturation or brightness, we call this function and store the states. Here you can see we are using PWM to drive our or RGB LED. So, whenever you call this function and the bulb is not off, we get the stored color from the matter color bulb instance and just use PVM to write it to our LEDs. The LED off function just turns all the LEDs off. This function, handle button press, will just run a timer and will set this variable to true. In order to upload, Go ahead and press this arrow button to compile and upload this sketch to your board. Now that the uploading has finished, let's go into the top right corner and open the serial monitor. Let's press reset on our board just to see the welcoming messages. And as you can see here, the upload was successful and this is an uncommissioned matter device. Here, providing us with all the details needed for commissioning it. So now that we are done with programming, it's time to actually commission our device to a Matter network. I will be using the Google Home app on my phone, and as I mentioned before, a Google Nest Hub Gen 2. So, to add the new Matter device, press the plus button in your Google Home app and select Matter Enable Device. As previously shown, you will get a link for the QR commissioning QR code in the serial output, just open it in a browser and scan it. This is what I will be doing right now. So, after scanning your QR code, you will be presented with this message. Just press agree and the commissioning will begin. During the commissioning, the phone will communicate with the device through BLE and do a key exchange for the matter network. This will be persisted, so even after restarting your device, you don't have to do the commissioning again.
So now that we are done with the commissioning, you can see we have a new metal bulb here and uh, we can control it. So if I turn this on, the LED on the board will turn on. And if I change the brightness here, the bulb or the LED will become more bright or even more dim. So uh, we can also change the color. We will represent it with a nice color view here. And anywhere I point on this, the color of the RGB LED will follow. We can also use our voice to control the color or the brightness or even the on-off state. So if I say, hey Google, set the matter bulb to green. All right, changing the matter bulb to green. So now it's been changed to green. You can also use your assistant screen to control it and the uh, state will just be synchronized to all your devices in a little while. So this is just a starting point I would have loved to show you guys, but we have a tons and tons of more examples and you can create a vast array of other devices. Thank you for taking this little tour with me and I can't wait to see what cool things you guys will create with this new nano board. Wow, did you see? We really can't wait to see what the community will invent using this little guy, the Arduino Nano Matter. Is your project ready to become smarter than ever? So to learn more about the Nano Matter and how to program it, visit labs.arduino.cc. Also, you can check out docs.arduino.cc to see the board's data sheets, pinout, tutorials, any other technical information you may need. Actually, Arduino Docs is the place to go where you can find all the technical information about Arduino products to get easily started in programming them and creating your projects. So also don't forget to sign up to know all about the next steps of the Arduino Matter at arduino.to slash nano dash matter. So what's next, Stefano? Well, now there's another super cool product we recently released. It was featured yesterday in, during Arduino day number two which was dedicated to educators, students, and innovators in, in the education environment, which you can still see on, uh, on YouTube. And I'm talking about Arduino Alvi. This little fellow features very smart and reliable motors from our partners, Analog Devices. So check out the video. <laughs> Welcome everyone to Arduino Days 2024. I'm Giovanni and I'm the Robotics and Solution Architect involved in the Arduino Alvic development. Today, I'll be joined by Alessandro to discuss the incredible Alvic robot. Thank you to Arduino. Thanks to Giovanni for the invitation. I'm Alessandro Leonardi, an account manager at Tranog Devices, and I'm thrilled to introduce ADI's motion control technology today. Thank you, Alessandro, and thank you, ADI. Arduino Alvix stands as a powerful and versatile mobile robot meticulously crafted for exploring the realms of robotics. Robotics serves as uh, one of the most tangible and interactive methods for teaching STEM education encompassing codings, electronics, and hands-on learning. Alvix, powered by Arduino Nano SP32, boosts an array of features, including color sensor, line follower sensors, distance sensors, multi-axis accelerometer and gyroscopes, proximity sensor and touch sensors. Additionally, it offers the flexibility to connect up to motor servers and expand via quick and grove connectors. Coding the robot is made accessible through MicroPython, Arduino and block-based programming. High precision encoder gear motors facilitate advanced project designs, allowing for tasks such as autonomous navigation, line following, and obstacle avoidance. Our collaboration with ADI has resulted as a high performance and competitive market product. It has indeed been a journey, Giovanni. <laughs> we have put our best effort into co-creating this awesome robot. Our discussion uh, initially revolved around uh, the possibilities of driving DC motors in a closed loop with our feedback, eventually leading us to the selection of the MAX 22211. Yes, 
Our mission was to build an advanced robot for educational and maker purposes, while keeping it simple with just two wheels, a clean design, plastic chassis, expandability, and the easy of coding with our tools. We aimed to give the end user full control of the motors, whether driving, velocity, and position, while ensuring safety from accidental errors. It is important to us to give our users a robot with precise movement because they allow perfect straight motion and on place rotation. Thank you, Giovanni. Indeed, we decided to target this specific component in our design for its characteristic of Volta range, protection mechanism, and integrated performances in just one chip. Analog devices, uh, trinamic motor, and motion control products transform digital information to precise uh, physical motion, enabling industry 4.0 performances across various applications. The ADI Trinamic portfolio includes motors, encoders, uh, motion control ICs and modules, offering a complete, efficient, uh, small footprint solution that can help the streamline complexity and the time to market for intelligent motion uh, systems while potentially improving space and performance, performance efficiency. The specific motion control IC MAX22211 allows for two full H bridges to control dual brushed motor or a single stamper motor. Despite its tiny 5 times 5 millimeter square package, so smaller than a one cent coin, it boosts high voltage and current capabilities. The integrated current regulators ensure precise velocity com control and manage the flow of current within the motor to achieve the decided torque. It's exceptionally suited for fine control in the motor and rotation easily. Additionally, it's very low RON, enable low power consumption and excellent thermal dissipation. Yeah, we love this robot, but unfortunately it's always cold. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the Tronic portfolio is very robust and performs exceptionally well in power dissipation and thermal behavior. This product features number of faults and sensing indicators, allowing you to monitor and prevent accidents efficiently. The full monitoring feature really allows you in Arduino to achieve the best performance for your robot. We truly value all the features inside in your motor driver and integrated in our robot. They not only enhance the functionality of our Alvic, but also contribute significantly to its safety and durability. Specifically, the mechanism to prevent accidental damage by locking the wheels add an extra layer of protection, ensuring the Alvic remains safe and robust under various operating conditions. We are delighted to work with you and ADI on this project. Thank you, Alessandro, and thank you, ADI. We hope you enjoy exploring Alvic and discovering more about dynamic motion control. Thank you, Giovanni. Thank you, Arduino. Enjoy your Arduino days 2024, delving deeper into technology behind the Arduino products. Bye. Bye. I hope you enjoyed it, and if you want to learn more about Alvic, have a look at arduino.cc slash education slash arduino dash alvic. What a smart little guy. I want one too. So in our next talk, our speaker, our next speaker, John Dole, will explore a cost-effective respiratory control leveraging Arduino uh, Uno R4 Wi-Fi. It's programmed for adjustable breathing patterns. It's prompt subjects to inhale during LED illumination and exhale when off. Ideal for clinicians and researchers seeking affordable respiratory synchronization solutions. So the Arduino Uno R4 Wi-Fi combines the processing power and exciting new peripherals of the RA4M1 microcontroller from Renesas with the wireless connectivity power of the ESP32 S3 from Espressive. On top of this, the Uno R4 Wi-Fi offers an onboard 12 by 8 LED matrix, quick connectors and much more to cover all the potential needs makers will have for their next project. That's pretty cool. 
And just after that, in the following talk, our colleague Leonardo will show a fun application to activate your light strip using an Android app in combination with Arduino. Well, I'm really curious to learn more about these projects. Hello, I'm John Doyle, Professor Emeritus at Case Western Reserve University. The project I will describe is entitled Arduino Breathing Pacer for Therapy and Research. Because this talk is detailed and fast paced, I have placed all the relevant materials at arduinomed.com. 0.1 Hertz paced breathing is a technique where individuals breathe at six breaths per minute. This technique is associated with meditation, mindfulness, and forms of yoga. Breathing at this pace is said to have psychological and physiological benefits, some of which are listed here. Many scientific studies of paced breathing have been conducted. We now know that the vagus nerve system modulated by breathing influences plays a mechanistic role in influencing heart rate regulation. This project was to program an Arduino Uno microcontroller to develop a respiratory timing system with a selectable respiratory rate and inspiratory expiratory parameters. Users are instructed to breathe in when the light emitting diode is a green and breathe out when the LED is red. Both the duration of inspiration and of expiration can be easily adjusted to meet varied requirements, such as for 0.1 Hertz therapeutic paced breathing exercises. The first version I developed was deliberately super simple with the pacing parameters hard coded into the sketch. The second version was an enhancement to additionally produce two electrical digital status outputs, first a five volt level on pin seven during inspiration and zero volts during expiration, and also a five volt level on pin eight during expiration with zero volts during inspiration. This enhancement was implemented with a view to doing multi-channel recording of the two LED control pins in conjunction with respiratory signals such as chest expansion measures, gas flows, or respiratory breath sounds. For research applications, one can use these two LED control signals as switch controllers to divide any obtained respiratory acoustic signal into separate inspiratory and expiratory channels. In version 3, I added a 2 line by 16 character LCD display for displaying the respiratory rate and IE ratio. I also added 4 push buttons to be used to select the respiratory rate and IE ratio. In version 4, I added a second display, this one being a 128 by 64 pixel OLED display, as well as a buzzer and a potentiometer. Development of version 4 was based on a miniature Arduino prototyping station using the new UNO R4 Wi-Fi. This prototyping system can also be used for many other medical instrumentation projects, as we'll see in a minute. The tiny oscilloscope in the upper right is used primarily to monitor input signals and um, signals from the digital to analog converter at pin A0. An I2C hub is used for LCD and OLED displays. A USB hub provides power to the Arduino Uno and the oscilloscope and hosts a flash drive containing the Arduino files and other materials. Here's what the original prototyping system looks like. The prototyping system is easily modified where needed and, as noted earlier, can be used in a variety of biomedical prototyping applications, such as those listed here. Here's a short video demonstration. Notice the green to indicate inspiration and the red to indicate expiration. On the upper right, the oscilloscope shows the waveform. For more information, such as uh, this PowerPoint slide set and code samples, go to arduinomed.com, a web portal focusing on Arduino-based medical instrumentation.
Hello everyone, I'm Leonardo Semartumino and today I'm going to talk about how to control and activate a live stream using Android and Arduino. This project provides a step-by-step -step guide to create a smart live stream controlled by a mobile application. With the mobile application, the user can uh, manage the effect and the color. For example, the effect could be a steady effect, blink effect, and the user can also change the color of the live strip. But how it works? We developed a mobile Android application or a smartphone, uh, leveraging, leveraging the Bluetooth and wireless connectivity to connect to the smart live strip. The smart live strip is based on, a, on an Arduino device. From the technical point of view, the live strip is composed by three main components. The board, an Arduino Nano uh, 32-bit board, by the LED strip, a NeoPixel uh, Adafruit uh, LED strip, and an external power supply. Uh, the external power supply is needed because only the USB of the Arduino Nano is not enough to power all the entire system. Bluetooth energy connectivity. The Bluetooth energy connectivity is a wireless communication technology with the focus for energy efficiency. It's widely used in a smart object and IoT application uh, and is present in the, in the most of uh, smartphones. Uh, Bluetooth range connectivity is a client server architecture where the client is called central and the server is called peripheral. In our project, the mobile application is the central and the live strip is the peripheral. Uh, there are two key operations in Bluetooth Low Energy, the scan operation and the advertising operation. The scan operation is when a center, like for example the mobile application, search nearby devices, for example the live strip. Uh, instead, the advertising procedure is when a peripheral actively broadcasts the present in the world to invite the center, the mobile application, to connect to. How the data are organized inside a peripheral? Uh, inside a peripheral, uh, data are organized in services and characteristics. A service is a, a set of related functionalities. Instead, a characteristic is a specific piece of information inside a service. We can say that a service is a set of characteristics. In our project, uh, we use one service and two characteristics. Uh, the service is called LID service. And inside there are two characteristics, the effect characteristic and the color characteristic. Uh, the, uh, the effect characteristic uh, allows the user to change the effect using uh, 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 a byte notation, zero for the off uh, effect, one for the steady effect, two for the blink effect, and so on. Uh, with the color characteristic, you can change the color using a RGB notation with three bytes. Now we take a look to the sketch. The sketch is composed by two main parts, the setup function and the loop function. Uh, the sketch is based on uh, two libraries, the Arduino BLD library and the Adafruit NeoPixel library. Uh, the Arduino BLD library is the official Arduino Bluetooth Low Energy library that enables the use of uh, Bluetooth Low Energy on Arduino platforms. The Adafruit NeoPixel library is a third-party library developed by uh, Adafruit to control and manage live strip uh, of NeoPixel family. In the setup function, the Arduino initialize the Bluetooth connectivity, configure uh, service and characteristic, configure advertising and start advertising. In the loop function, uh, the Arduino manage uh, the central connectivity, the mobile application connection, manage the command coming from the mobile application and control the light functionalities according to the command sent by the, by the mobile application. The app consists of two pages, the scan page and the connection page. In the scan page, the user can start the scan procedure, click on the scan button. When the scan starts, a list is populated with the, the peripheral devices, the nearby peripheral devices. When the user clicks on an item of the list, the connection procedure starts 
and when the production procedure is successful, the app goes to the production page. In the production page, the user can uh, control and manage the asset and the color of the live strip and also can trigger the disconnection with the disconnect button. When the user clicks on the disconnect button, the disconnection procedure starts and the app comes back to the scan page. And now the app is ready for a new connection, for a new scan operation. The app is created using the Android Studio, uh, that is the official integrated development environment of Android. It's totally developed uh, with Kotlin programming language and all the Bluetooth functions are the native uh, Bluetooth function. We don't use any third-party library from Bluetooth. All the code of the project is provided in the GitHub Linux. Thanks for the attention. Wow, just so many great projects and talks today. But Stefan, I wanted to ask you, what would you recommend for who would like to actually start with electronics and coding? Well, I believe uh, man, the many beginners that are following us could be interested in this question. And my suggestion would be the Arduino Starter Kit is one of the most popular uh, products we have, which appeals to beginners since no prior experience is required, as the kit introduces both coding and electronics through fun, engaging, and hands-on hands projects. You can use the Starter Kit to learn about current, voltage, and digital logic, as well as the fundamentals of programming. There is also an introduction to sensors and actuators and how to understand both digital and analog signal, basically. So all of these is, is explained in the, in the project book that we provide inside the kit. And Auri, have you ever tried using the Arduino Starter Kit? I actually have. Hmm. So what, what was the project that you enjoyed the most? I think my favorite one was the spaceship interface. Okay. I actually, oh. I get it. I actually built my own spaceship dust, uh, dashboard and it was just really fun to play around with the LEDs. But actually coming back to Earth now, um, <laughs> going on to our next talk, uh, we're about to see the uh, TME Education's contribution to our planet and they actually use recycled plastic to produce materials for 3D printers. <laughs> Uh, I'm Sanka Kantema. I'm a team education ambassador in Malawi. My name is Laki Ngawoma. I'm a member of Megaspace. Currently, we're working on this project of filament extruder. So this is a, uh, one of the uh, change makers of the project where we are sponsored by team education to make our own uh, 3D filament uh, from the plastic waste. So due to the prices of the uh, filament, and the accessibility uh, to get the filament uh, from the outside the country. We thought that it's important to build a project where we can be able uh, to produce our own filament from the plastic waste. Team Education sponsored us with this uh, project, the components and the, um, everything, so that uh, we should be able to uh, recycle the waste into uh, filament. We started uh, this project uh, a year ago, so uh, now we are finalizing the project and we have tested it. We still are testing and prototyping. The new, in the near future, we're going to build a, a big version of the filament so that we'll be able to supply other makers uh, of fab labs uh, within uh, the, uh, the country. The plastic waste, sometimes from the plastic bottles or the failed uh, filament, uh, I mean uh, 3D uh, printing uh, stuff. So we take those uh, uh, with the waste from the uh, 3D printer or the uh, plastic bottle, then you will put, drop it uh, inside uh, this funnel. So it has to be, first has to be uh, in a Paris form. Uh, this has to be smaller enough so to fit inside the, uh, the uh, funnel. Then uh, you drop it uh, here in the funnel. Then uh, the motor 
the motor is uh, rotating, so it has a barrel that they push uh, the plastic uh, into the nozzle. So the motor push it in the, uh, using uh, the barrel. Then here we have a heaters that heat the waste. And uh, as you can see outside, we are uh, getting the filament. We just had, uh, need some motor uh, to put it into a lock. Uh, this is a very good project for uh, Malawi in the, the maker space like here, so that uh, young people, instead of just using uh, the filament, will be making their own uh, filament uh, from the plastic waste. So as maker space, we're thanking GMO Education for sponsoring this project. We have been making, we have been testing it, it's working, we're making our own filaments from the waste. So we're actually coming towards the end of our Arduino days and I've loved all the projects, all the talks and because it is a community day, we're going to end with a community project. But don't forget that we love to see all the creations that you make. So don't forget to go on to our project hub at projecthub.arduino.cc and just share with us all the inventions that you come up with. Okay, so it's community day, so our last talk it, it, it must be a community contribution. So here it comes. The next speaker, Bill, is a software developer who loves using Arduino Cloud and will show you how to do real-time monitoring of env environmental data. Enjoy! <laughs> Well, hello and welcome to my workshop. My name is Bill and this is the DroneBot Workshop. And here in the DroneBot Workshop, we work with a number of Arduino and Arduino IoT cloud-based projects. And today for Arduino Days, I'd like to show you a project that I'm working on, one that solves a real world problem. And that's what the Arduino infrastructure is great for. So let me illustrate my project to you and then I'll give you a little demonstration of what I've got so far. The project that I'm presenting today deals with another type of cloud, a cloud of pollution. Pollution is enough to make you sick, and it can cause or augment several serious health conditions. There are several forms of pollution. Ozone, which is a gas that can trigger chest pain and throat irritation. Particulate matter, which is a mixture of solid and liquid particles in the air. Noxious gases such as carbon dioxide, carbon monoxide, and sulfur dioxide, and volatile organic compounds like benzene, formaldehyde, and methylene chloride. There's no doubt that our air quality in general is deteriorating. Pollution is responsible for 6.5 million deaths per year worldwide. Air pollution can originate from both industrial and natural sources, and we can divide it into two categories outdoor pollution and indoor pollution, and my project deals with indoor pollution. It may be your home sweet home, but your house is actually a source of many types of pollution. And if you think you can mask it all with an air freshener, well that's a source of pollution as well. Indoor pollution raises a number of red flags, and it's not to be taken lightly. It has some serious side effects. But we can fight back and take action with technology, and that's what I'm going to do today. We're going to be obtaining data from a number of different sensors. We'll be monitoring to find the current status of our air, the historical status to see if it's improving or degrading, and of course for alerts to deal with immediate situations. And then we'll react. We can react manually, and this can be something as simple as opening a window, or automatically, such as turning on a ventilation fan. The project I'm building will be working with the Arduino IoT Cloud. I'm going to attach an air sensor unit to the cloud to measure a number of different parameters in the air. We can monitor all of this with a cloud console. And if there's a serious situation, we can send alerts to a mobile device. The air sensor unit is built around an Arduino Nano ESP32 board and it has some common and readily available sensors attached to it to measure particulate matter, VOC index, temperature, humidity, and air pressure. 
On the cloud console, we'll be able to display volatile organic compounds, or VOCs. We'll display particulate matter, and we'll be able to display it in three different levels, PM1, PM2.5, and PM10. The number after the PM refers to the size of the particles in microns. We'll also be monitoring temperature, humidity, and air pressure. These are values that are necessary for human comfort, and they can also augment certain situations such as the growth of mold. When we have an alert, we'll be using triggers, a relatively new feature of the Arduino IoT cloud. Triggers will allow us to send a push notification, and that notification will be received by the Arduino IoT cloud app on our phone. Another addition to the system is a gas sensor unit built around an Arduino Uno R4 Wi-Fi board. This sensor will use three gas sensors, and as these are 5-volt sensors, they can take advantage of the 5-volt architecture of the Uno R4. It also can drive an exhaust or ventilation fan through a relay. The final configuration is shown here, and it will consist of multiple gas sensors, multiple air quality sensors, the console and the alerts monitor, as well as a direct connection into the Amazon Echo Home unit and a connection through If This Then That to both the Echo and to the Amazon air quality system. So the next time the cloud of pollution enters my home, I'm going to be fighting back with the Arduino IoT cloud. Now here are some prototypes of both the gas sensor and the air sensor that I've built, and they're just wired up on solderless breadboards right now. Now on the left, we can see the gas sensor, and it's built around an Arduino Uno R4 Wi-Fi device. It has three of the MQ gas sensors on it, and MQ sensors are pretty neat. They're sensitive to specific gases, and they're analog devices, so they change resistance, and therefore they're going to the A to D converters on the Arduino Uno R4. You can use different MQ gas sensors if you wish because they have different sensors for different gases. It's also driving a relay and I just have a small test fan on it for it right now. In real operation of course the relay would drive a full-size ventilation or exhaust fan. Now this is the uh, air sensor that I have and this is based around an Arduino uh, Nano ESP32 that's over here and it's got uh, two I squared C sensors. This one senses barometric pressure, temperature, and humidity and this one senses uh, volatile organic chemicals or VOCs. Now as these are I squared C sensors I could easily just add some more sensors to the board and I probably will. And this sensor is a rather interesting one. This is the particulate matter sensor, the PM 2.5 sensor. It also senses PM1 and PM10. This is not an I squared C device. It's actually a serial device. So I'm using one of the additional UARTs in the Arduino Nano ESP32 uh, in order to communicate with this. And here's the dashboard that I've created for the air sensor. And you can see that I've got a number of different widgets on here displaying all the different parameters that the air sensor is providing. So over here, I have the current temperature in degrees Celsius. I have the air pressure here, the humidity, and the volatile organic compound index or VOC index. Incidentally, if you're interested in how to read that number, a VOC index of 100 or below is considered to be excellent. Anything over 200 and you should be worried. Now down on this side, I'm also displaying particulate matter, PM1, PM2.5, and PM10. So the one micron, two and a half micron, and 10 micron particles. Now I've also got two graphs going. I've got the uh, standard one over here, and this is displaying the volatile organic compound index. And of course, you can go back and take a look at it over a period of time. So if I want to see a day, for example, I'll click on here give it a moment for it to gather the data. And there's my VOC index over the last day, and I can go to seven or 15 days as well. And highlighting on the graph gives you the actual reading and the time that it was taken at. Now I've got the advanced graph on over here, and this is displaying all three different levels of particulate matter. It has three different axes that you can see here, here, and here to display those levels. And it too can display it over a period of time. You can also with this, select a period of time using the calendar control and just get uh, a period of time that you want to view data for uh, through the calendar. So it's very, very versatile. 
So now in order to demonstrate this, I'm actually going to cause a little bit of pollution in my room. And I'm going to do that just with a soldering gun and a little bit of solder. So I'll heat up the gun. And once it gets hot, I'll put some solder on the end and try to make a little bit of smoke in the atmosphere here. So here we've got a little bit of smoke going. Now, it does take a moment or two for the sensors to register that. So we'll have to take a look at them, but they should go up. I should be seeing both volatile organic compounds and I should also see a, an increase in particulate matter as well. And so if we look, we can see that we are definitely got volatile organic compounds and uh, the particulate matter seems to be rising. And as I said, there's a bit of a delay. So I'm expecting actually a really big rise to occur. There we go. Now we're really going high. Uh, yes, the particulate matter sensor actually has a little fan inside it over here, which draws in the particles and then it analyzes it. And I believe all of these sensors do multiple readings and averaging, so they don't respond immediately. But as you can see, they do definitely respond and they are definitely showing that the air inside my workshop is no longer very safe to breathe. Now I'll have to say the thing that impressed me the most about building this with the Arduino IoT Cloud was how quickly I was able to get everything together. With the cloud writing a lot of the code for me and the dashboard being so easy to put together, it was literally a matter of minutes before I had a working prototype. Now I'm going to continue this project and when it's finished you'll be able to find all the details on both my website and my YouTube channel as well as in the Arduino Project Hub. And so that's my project. I hope you enjoyed it, and I really hope that you enjoy the rest of Arduino days. Goodbye. So here we are, back from Torino. It has been a great three days, but sadly, it has to come to an end. So thanks to the Arduino marketing team for making this happen, as well to all of our colleagues, partners, and customers who joined us. If you missed out on the video, you can still watch it on our YouTube channel. On day one, we invited many customers, technology partners, and technology gurus from many industries, as well as some speakers that contributed showing the potential of our industrial grade solutions. Day two was also a blast. We talked about the innovative science kit R3, as well as the new Alvic and PLC starter kit, among many other things. Today, day three, it's also been great. And we also like to thank all of the many organizations that have organized uh, different events and the participation from everyone that submitted their projects. So thank you very much. We still couldn't show every single video, but we will still stay in touch so we can create something together. And one more thing, it's been amazing to see all the events we'd had over more than 260 events oh, yeah. worldwide so and they were all organized autonomously and this is just to celebrate the love for open source and arduino make sure also to take advantage of the two discounts we prepared for you there is a 15 percent discount on the arduino store until tomorrow march 24 and also a 30 percent maker yearly plan discount on the arduino cloud so I guess it's uh, the end now. Yeah. So happy, happy Arduino happy days. days.